Hi, I'm Wanda from Alanda Craft, and today I'm going to show you how to make these quick and easy pot mitts. Now they're just brilliant. As soon as your old pot mitts get ratty, you can go and whip up one of these in no time at all. And they make great gifts as well. So let's get on and show you how to make them. So here's what you need. You'll need two squares of fabric. Now mine are 10 inches, in fact they're two leftover layer cake pieces. So I have my two pieces of fabric. And they're contrasting nicely. I have a piece of batting and I also have a piece of Insulbrite. Now this is heat resistant batting. It doesn't really matter how you place it into your project um, but it helps with heat um, when you're picking up pots and things. Now you also need a piece of uh, ribbon. So what we do is we take our batting and our Insulbrite and place one on top of the other and we do the same here. So we put one piece of fabric with the right side facing upwards and we put the other piece with the right side facing down. Now we take our piece of tape, you can make it as long as you need to for your purpose. Just fold it in half and we're going to pop it into one corner and leave the raw edges hanging over and there we are. Now once we've got everything organized how it needs to be we're just going to pin it all together. Now we're going to pin it making sure that we put some pins like this so because we need to leave an opening to turn this through. So I've put some pins this way so I know where to start and stop and I'm going to use a half inch uh, seam and I'm going to sew right off the edge, start again and come down like that all the way around and remember when I come to here I'm going to stop, now I'm going to backstitch when I start and I'm going to backstitch when I stop. Uh, that just gives you a nice firm stitching so that when you turn it through it doesn't break. So here we are, we have one here that's already been stitched. And you can see I've used the half inch, I've got my little tab in there, and there's my opening. Now before we go any further, what we need to do is we need to trim some of this off because we want to get rid of some of this excess bulk. We don't need all that in our side seams. So I simply take my scissors and I come across here, making sure I don't cut my stitching. And I like to just take that bit there, but I also like to take a, a bit further back and just come into the corner like that reduces that bulk on each corner and I do that with all of these corners so again make sure you don't cut your stitching you don't want to have to go and restitch everything and you don't want it pulling apart when you're using it and there we go now we're also going to take the bulk off the sides because we don't need all that bulk in the seams. Now when I first made one what I did is I tried to cut the or I cut the batting and the insole bright a bit smaller than my square but I had so much mucking around to do to try and uh, get everything so that it caught into the seam line I thought well that's ridiculous so what I'm going to do is simply just cut back with the scissors make sure you have your piece of fabric here you know, pushed back so you don't cut that and we're just going to cut off the excess batting and backing. You can do it with a rotary cutter if you wish. I'm just going to use the scissors, so you just that's all we're doing. We're just cutting it back so when we turn this through, we haven't got all that excess bulk in the seam line. Because there's nothing worse than trying to get everything to sit nice than when you have bulk. Now I'll do that with all these sides and of course I need to show you this bit here because I'm going to do exactly the same across here. This is where our opening is, remember? And we don't want all that bulk sitting in there when we turn that back. So I'm going to cut that off as well. I guess I'm seeing I'm here and I'm on the last side. I might as well finish that off completely. So there we go. Again, just taking care not to cut your fabric. And once you've done that, you'll turn it through. Now you'll just split the the two main pieces of fabric and just start very gently bringing it through. I usually push the corners through first. I find that's the easiest thing to do. Just like that. There's our little tab pop through. Let's pop the corner through. And then you'll just get a, a skewer or your scissors very gently pull all up, push all those corners out so that they're nice and neat. I'm not going to worry too much about this at the moment because I'll come back and do it. Okay, so this is what it's like when it's been pushed out. And as I say, I just use a, a chopstick to get those corners out so that they're quite nice and neat. Now once we've got this, we just need to make sure that we 
turn these uh, the opening pieces in and press them so that they sit nicely because what we're going to do next is we're going to top stitch around to hold everything together and I've done that on this one you can see here I've started with them um, with a back stitch but I've just gone around and in this case I've pivoted at the corners I didn't go right off like I did when I was sewing the thing together and then I've come back and I've just done a couple of lines across here now you can leave it like this if you wish but I like to hold everything together nice and neat so I'll just do a little back stitch and come across diagonally finish with a back stitch and the same here or you can do a tie off whatever your machines like does and again this way with this one you can see I've just done three lines and I find that quite handy because it just folds in half when I'm picking up the pot handle. Now these make ideal gifts and they look great and you can make them in all sorts of colours, they can be contrasting or they can be the same. So there you are, that's how to make a nice and easy pot mitt. So if you've enjoyed this tutorial give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel and don't forget to check us out on Pinterest, Facebook and Instagram.